So you want to experience fulfillment, success, and joy learning the piano or any instrument? Spending just five, even 10 minutes on this simple exercise will support your growth, mindset, and motivation for years to come. Anytime we start working towards a new goal, there is power in finding clarity around what you hope to get out of the process. Asking yourself things like, why am I doing this? Why is it important to me? And what are my big goals as I'm getting started? Now, clarity isn't only important when we set new goals. It's valuable in our relationships, how we spend our time, how we spend our money. But this clarity is extremely important when it comes to learning any musical instrument. And here's why. Learning a musical instrument is a discipline of delayed gratification. This means it's a process that is not about experiencing instant pleasure. It's a longer process that leads to more valuable and long lasting rewards on the other side of your work. So in other words, it's something that becomes most fun and rewarding after you've put in some not so fun work to get there. Now at my music school, learning a model of delayed gratification is one of the main reasons why people will say they decided to start music lessons or have their children start music lessons. Getting comfortable with the discomfort of delayed gratification is proven to provide skills that you'll need to work towards many long-term goals in many areas of life. It teaches you how to regulate impulses. It's proven to support academic success, social competency. It's even connected to lower levels of substance abuse and obesity healthier stress responses because it teaches you the value of not chasing that instant pleasure but instead working towards valuable outcomes in the long term. So learning this is valuable and it has the power to shape your approach to learning and reaching all of your goals but because of that it's important to know that there are actually a wide range of feelings and experiences that are a part of it. For example, most people will begin their journey of learning an instrument because they want to experience the joy of making music. Now, there are absolutely many periods of joy and curiosity and learning, but there are many other things that you also experience as you dive into the discipline. So for example, you'll experience things like some frustration, maybe some loss of interest working on certain pieces, some self-doubt, maybe even some boredom in practice or not wanting to practice. So when people experience these things, they can sometimes think that something must be wrong and they'll stop practicing, waiting for that feeling to change or even quit. But really they're just in the process of that delayed gratification. What they really need is the structure and support to keep working to get to the other side. So this clarity exercise I'm sharing with you today is one that I've done over the years with thousands of music students between my brick and mortar school and online programs. It makes a huge difference in guiding you to your goal outcomes and I've watched it lead students to the long-term success that they're after. Not only learning to play, but having that fulfilling musical journey, experiencing deep confidence and knowing the tools that they can use to draw out their own full potential. So this exercise is impactful if you do it when you're getting started on learning a musical instrument. It really helps you to frame and manage your expectations before you hit those first points of resistance. But you can and should revisit at any point in your learning. For greatest value, you'll be able to repeat this exercise and check in on things throughout your whole process of learning. Anchoring in this exercise when you experience both challenges and successes is powerful, both for your self-discovery and as you practice testing out different learning strategies. Teachers, you can use this as an active discussion point with your students. Parents, you can include your children in this conversation so they learn to articulate some of the feelings that they may experience when they're learning an instrument as young students as well. It's a powerful exercise to see these things on paper and you'll be able to refer to it when you experience frustration in growth areas at the instrument and all areas of life. So let's get to it. Now this exercise is very simple. It has only a few steps to it and it involves writing and seeing visually what we're talking about. So I have included the exact worksheet that I use with my students for you to download in the link in this episode description. You can pause and download the sheet now or you can listen now and revisit and download it after. Now at our school and in my online programs, we welcome students with a wide range of backgrounds and goals for what they hope to get out of their music lessons. It's exciting, we love to work with all of them and also to hear this wide range of reasons 
why they decided to get started. Now, some will say that they want to take music specifically for how it promotes brain health and cognitive development or academics. Others will say that they just want to be able to play and have fun, connect and have an outlet to express themselves. Some people will flat out say, we're here because we want classical music training to be on our university applications and educational records. Whatever your reason is, there are so many benefits of musical training, so whatever yours is to get started is always great. Because no matter what your goal is, you will always have to tap into a web of skills and experiences that are all very much intertwined and interrelated to each other. Meaning that no matter what your initial goals are, the only way to fully reach all of those benefits is to work on and develop the others. So here's what I mean. One of the most common end goals that we hear from our families who come to us at our school is we just want to have or we want our child to have fun playing music. So they talk about the joy they've experienced with music, birthday parties, concerts, and they just want that fun and enjoyable experience all the time. So to be clear, that's fantastic to have joy, fun, happiness is something that we can certainly anchor in for ourselves and our children. It's a wonderful goal to have, but now anchoring in that intention and knowing that this is a process of delayed gratification, it's now important to be aware of the other experiences that we may have to have in the process to reach that point. Yes, it will bring you so much joy when you get to the point of having these skills of making music, but to get there, you will likely have to experience other things like a fair bit of repetition. You might have to experience some frustration or some self-doubt. If your goal is to experience expressing and sharing music with others, that's wonderful, but it might also involve facing your fears and stretching outside of your comfort zone to learn to perform. So you will have to actively develop your patience, your problem solving skills, all to get to that enjoyable end goal. Now on the flip side of that, we sometimes have students who will say that their goal is academic ability. In other words, they want to take music lessons to improve their study habits. So that's great and that's another wonderful benefit and goal. Now their main goal is to have a way to boost their academics, but the only way to fully experience those benefits will be to fully learn the musical language, which involves developing artistry and artistic expression. Their main goal is to have the process as a way to boost their academics, but the only way to fully experience that benefit will be to dive in and learn the musical language, develop artistry, artistic expression. Even though their end goal is boosting their academics, they'll have to tap into their imagination, their emotions, shape their own perspectives and seek deeper meaning in the world around us through art to get to that end goal. So the only way for them to fully experience one is through the support of building up the others. So this exercise is all about connecting those dots and building that awareness in the learning process. It allows us to step back and see how multifaceted our entire learning and growth process is. By putting our experiences into words, it allows us to separate ourselves a bit from our craft. It allows us to use this process as a model that helps us to understand and have something that we can reference as we move through growth experiences in life. So the exact clarity worksheet I use for this is in the link below. Take time to write these down because it will matter that you have your goals clear on paper and your experiences written down for you to look at whenever you're in a period of frustration or you might want to quit. Save it, take a picture of it, save it on your phone. It will be something that you'll be thankful you can revisit. If you're supporting your child to learn, it will help them to understand how they're feeling, if they're feeling resistance to wanting to practice. You will be very thankful that you have this written down to have that awareness there objectively. So I call this clarity exercise mapping your iceberg. Now we've all heard the saying, it's just the tip of the iceberg, and that's kind of where this exercise came from. Meaning that that small point that we see on the surface always has a big mountain that we can't see beneath. We're all very familiar with this concept, and I started talking about icebergs with my students decades ago. When students or their families would say things like, you probably always wanted to practice because I can see how much you love the piano. I would tell them that the truth is the tip of the iceberg is what you see and those are the feelings of love and passion that I have for making music. 
But what you don't see beneath the surface would be the years of frustrations, experiencing failures, maybe some boredom, times of being disinterested. These are all things that I would have had to push through and work through with that end goal in mind. So for this clarity exercise, what we do is we reverse engineer this process. On the top of your worksheet, in the link below, you'll first see on the top of the page many of the benefits of why people want to learn a musical instrument. You'll see things like brain health, patience, developing perseverance, learning goal setting, problem solving, imagination, all of these different things that you will see on the sheet. You can circle the ones that apply to you, add any more that come to mind. Now below that you will see your icebergs and it's time to map them. First what you'll do is you'll write what you believe your end goal is at the peak of that iceberg. In our example that you'll see on the sheet we wrote delayed gratification. Now if that is the peak and the goal of your iceberg, that's the end goal that you're working towards. But now we're going to reverse engineer at least two supporting experiences or skills that you'll have to develop in order to reach that end goal. So if your goal is to develop resilience and tools to experience delayed gratification, then two supporting experiences you'll need to have might be developing patience or comfort experiencing discomfort. Got the idea? So being able to step back and connect these dots is what it's all about. This simple exercise becomes powerful because you're able to put these experiences into words, detach from them by putting them on paper. You're able to see these feelings that would otherwise be entirely internal and place them into the context of your larger experience and greater long-term goals. So often my students will keep this worksheet in the front of their notebooks or on the wall near their piano. It allows for it to easily and naturally flow into all conversations. So when students are experiencing gratification and success and they're having fun at the instrument, we do take the time to reflect on maybe some other more challenging experiences that they had that brought them there. On the flip side, if they're feeling discouraged, you can put it into context to recognize that you may be in a supporting experience that is necessary to your growth towards your end goals. So the exercise and the worksheet is in the link below. It's so simple, takes minutes to complete, and I've seen for years how it can act as a guiding star for years for all students. You can write anything in the points of your icebergs as you'd like, and I found over the years that this exercise is powerful when you try to connect as many points from different icebergs as possible. Actively building your awareness, awareness of your own learning process and beliefs, connecting the dots to where you are now, and managing your own expectations for what it will take to get to where you want to be. This is like finding a nugget of gold, understanding your learning process. Now like this lesson video if you found it helpful. Remember you can download the worksheet in the link below, then comment and tell me what it's helped you to discover. Now at this point you might be wondering how you can work towards these goals consistently. Now after you've worked through this lesson and worksheet, your next step can be to watch the lesson that includes my favorite practice and habit tracker tool. Another very simple sheet and tool and strategy I use to measure how small consistent habits lead to those big results. Don't forget to subscribe so I can see you in the next lesson and I'll talk to you soon.